Yeah, we do. We're, uh, we're glad to be back. You know, it's a, it's a long way over to Africa. It's a long way. It's two days there and two days back. Uh, well, the way back on the clock, it goes by quicker because you're gaining some time, but it's a long way. But praise God, it was, we were sent. We were sent by you and sent by the Holy Spirit. And, you know, we were able to accomplish every good work that we were created for, for this trip. I mean, it all happened. Uh, the pastor's conference in Livingston, Zambia uh, was just amazing. We're going to share about that. The conference there in the, at the project, the work that went on at the project. But let's share a little bit. Look at, if you look right here, you can see uh, Zambia. And at the corner, south corner of Zambia is Victoria Falls in the town called Livingstone. And maybe you're familiar uh, with the famous missionary, who, Dr. Livingston, who went down there and won some tribes to the Lord. And praise God, that seed he planted is growing all across uh, the region. It's just amazing. But we were there in Livingstone. And, uh, you know, we, we started a conference there a few years ago. The first conference we set up, there was about 30 pastors. I remember, praise God, a few of us from here were there in this one little room. And then it, it tends to grow. As we share this gospel of grace, uh, a couple years later we had one here, and there was about 150, close to 200. And you know, in this time, praise God, they came from seven nations. Uh, because it's in a strategic location, uh, 58 pastors and leaders came across from Zimbabwe. Uh, it was amazing to see, church, uh, down the center aisle of that church we're in, the Namibian flag uh, comes with 40 pastors who came across from Namibia. Uh, praise God. They even came from all the way across eastern Zambia. You see the nation of Malawi. There were six pastors who traveled a bus along with some pastors from the far eastern section. of. They came. And what's happening here? It's the message, the truth of the good news of God's grace going out. And so many are hungry for it. Folks have been... Uh, you know, duped by religion. And uh, in the religion, they've come to Christ, but yet Satan tries to keep them defeated by putting them back under yokes of bondage, of religion, denominationalism, rules, do's and don'ts, all kind of things about the law. And this truth of His grace sets them free, just as it has been doing for you for so long. God's opened the doors for us to expand it, and uh, it's just been amazing. I want to share a verse while we hold on that picture right there. Um, I checked with the, uh, the ones that were helping us set this up. And, you know, there was about 250 lead pastors from all the area. And each one brought a leader. You know, that makes that doubles that, makes it about 500. Some of them brought two or three. So at one time... Um, they were, they were planning on 500 and they had to get more food because there was close to six. And then they said even uh, with all the pastors that were locally coming on that last day, they went over 600. Uh, so it was just amazing. It filled this church up. The praise and worship was remarkable. But let me share this verse, Acts chapter 20. If you would, just flip there with me. And uh, Acts chapter 20. And I'd like to say a special welcome home to our good friend and one of our founding men members, Miss Georgia Clark, is here with her sisters. God bless you, Georgia. You know, uh, 20 and 19 and 18 years ago, Miss Georgia was rocking my daughter, Jessie, in the nursery. And praise the Lord. Now Jess girls up here singing with the praise team. It's just amazing. And uh, good to have you back home with us this month. Praise the Lord. Acts chapter 20 in verse 24. However, I consider my life worth nothing to me if only I may finish the race and complete the task the Lord Jesus has given me. And here is the task, not only for Paul, but for all of us. The task of testifying to the gospel of God's grace. I love the way that New Testament line calls it. What is it? It's the good news of grace. This is the gospel. It's not a new gospel. It's not a new revelation. It's the truth. 
Praise God. It's the truth we're helping to impart to the pastors in a deeper way than many of them have ever seen before. Uh, once it's brought out, just like it was brought out to me years ago and from reading from others and understanding and getting reintroduced to the message of the truth that Paul wrote all through the New Testament, once the scales fall off and your eyes are open, it jumps out on every page. Well, some of these folks needed that help. And once the scales fall off after the first couple of messages, they were already rejoicing and coming to us at the breaks and stuff. Man, we haven't seen it this way before. We need this teaching so much. And it's just been amazing what God's doing. So praise the Lord. There we were and uh, celebrating and rejoicing with them. Uh, praise God. And you know, this truth of His grace, and I want to address just briefly, Matt did a good job sharing it, with all the turmoil going on in America, the turmoil that's causing division, racial things and struggle. Folks, I don't, I don't focus on the problem. We focus on the answer to the problem. In the answer answer to every problem in anyone's life, marriage, children, turmoil in the streets, whatever, the answer is a deeper revelation of the truth of Jesus Christ. You see, we went to Africa, and there we are ministering and worshiping with people from seven nations, and they all come together under one banner. They come together under the name of Jesus Christ. And we were one in spirit, one in truth. We were one body, all worship. There was no division. There was no problems. There was no turmoil. There was no strife. There was no race. There was harmony in Christ Jesus because He brought us together as one family. Amen? So as you're hearing things and talking to people and family and friends and guests and relatives, man, just share the answer. All you got to do, if you know, if you see the love of Jesus more clearly, you won't want to kill your brother. Amen? Hallelujah. You'll want to bless them and help them and go to them and serve them. So one more verse I want to share along those lines. Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 2. And then we're going to get into a little story about the trip. And we'll have our folks that, that you sent join us and share some stories, beginning with five new ones that came with us that have never been before. We'll hear what they have to say about it first. Amen? Ephesians chapter 2, verse 11 says this, church. Therefore, remember that formerly you who are Gentiles by birth and called uncircumcised by those who call themselves the circumcision, that done in the body with, by the hands of men. Of course, we're talking about the Jews were circumcised as a sign of the covenant. They were God's people. And then everyone else was the Gentile outside of that covenant. It goes on to say, verse 12, Remember that at that time you were separate from Christ, excluded from the citizenship in Israel, and foreigner, foreigners to the covenants of the promise, without hope and without God in this world. So there was two groups of people. Those that were under the covenant and those that were outside of it. But praise God, His grace and His love was reaching out to everybody. And in the fulfillment of time, verse 13, but now, everybody say, but now. In Christ Jesus, you who were once far away have been brought near through the blood of Jesus. We were all far away from it uh, by our sin, we were, you know, in our sin nature, we were separate from God. But by the blood of Jesus, all the world can be brought near to God himself through Jesus Christ. Now watch this, verse 14. For he himself is our peace, who made the two one and has destroyed the barrier, the dividing wall of hostility. So if there's a barrier of hostility in, you know, it, it's, it's something that, this round of turmoil was started in, and there's been several rounds of turmoil, you know, whether it be Ferguson or here or there. This round of turmoil started in Baton Rouge and then it spread to, you know, Dallas, Monroe, Atlanta. But this, this dividing wall of hostility between peeps, groups of people, this dividing wall, this hostility, the Bible says he has destroyed that barrier. Then the dividing wall of hostility. How? Verse 15. 
by abolishing in his flesh the law with its commandments and regulations. This is how he destroyed it. The law put everybody, you know, under that. Um, we were away from God by the law that condemned us. But Jesus fulfilled it. And then real clear, and we had to explain this to the pastors, he abolished it. When Christians first hear that, they shudder against it. We've not, you know, we don't know that the law has been abolished. Well, read it again, man. Where did, when did you not read that verse before? Sometimes we've got to point it out to folks. And man, there's so many good questions at the conferences. They would stand up and ask a question from their denomination or their list of rules or whatever. You know, Satan has blinded them to this. And they've asked a good question. But praise God, by the Holy Ghost, we have the answers. And as the answer goes out and say, yes, the word does say as they stood up and asked the question, didn't the Bible say that, you know, not one jot or tittle of the law will be done away with till all is fulfilled? I said, yes, that's a good question. But praise God, Jesus fulfilled it. And after he fulfilled it, he abolished it. And then they would receive it and get it. One guy stood up. He was from the SDA denomination, Seventh Day Adventists, who were under some legalistic law of Old Covenant to have to worship on Saturday and can't eat this and that. And yet he's sitting there at the project receiving all of this with joy. And he stood up and asked the question, well, pastor, now that we've received this grace and understood it more clearly, how does this affect what we can and cannot eat? And I say, I'm so glad you asked that question. That's such a good question. Let me tell you a story about Peter, Paul, and Barnabas. And I took him to Galatians. You've probably heard me share that story about them eating a ham sandwich with the Gentiles. And when I told them they were eating a pork sandwich, they all laughed, you know. Then I told them about the Jews who were sent from Jerusalem to spy out the freedom that the disciples now, they were Jews, but now they're Christians, and they had freedom in Christ to eat in the same room with Gentiles that were saved, hallelujah, and eat a pork sandwich with them. And I said, these Jews walked in the back door. And I just began to share this story out there in the bush. These Jews walked in the back door, and Peter kind of freaked out. He looked at them, coming from Jerusalem, sent by James, and he looked over at Paul, and he started backing away from the Gentiles and hiding his pork sandwich. And he got close to the back room and he dumped it real quick. And then Barnabas, who was with Peter, was a little confused too. He was looking at Paul, looking at Peter, looking at Paul, looking at the guys coming in. He thinks he's getting in trouble. And Barnabas started backing away by Peter. And my dear brother Paul, who had a revelation of grace better than any of them, turned to them both and rebuked them in front of everyone. How dare you, Peter! After you've come to this grace by faith in Jesus, are you going to back down into the law? And he rebuked them. You can read it for yourself in Galatians. And he rebuked them openly in front of everyone. I like that. Praise God. I like to do the same thing. Rebuke the religious and reach out to the sinner. It's great fun. Hallelujah. Amen. But after we shared that story, this SDA pastor, along with any other denial, understood it, the gospel that is there. It just opens up their eyes and understand and set us free. Jesus fulfilled the law, then he abolished it. And when he abolished it, he made the two to become one Jew and Gentile, black and white, Chinese, Japanese, South Korean, Asian. It doesn't matter who. And we who are in Christ become one new man by Jesus Christ. There is no more wall of hostility than this church and the churches in Africa or this church and the churches in Mexico. We who are born again, we had so much in common. The Spirit of the Lord in them and the Spirit of the Lord in us. We were one person, one. Amen. The answer to the world's troubles is not to fight about our differences. The answer to the world's troubles is to point people to the truth of Jesus Christ. And if they're born again, and you're born again, and the light of this truth comes, you'll just love one another. Here's how they'll know we're Christians. By our love. By our love. Church, you demonstrated this love by sending us all the way to Africa. Having this conference and opens the doors here. Let's just, I'm going to run through the, the story of the, the trip, and then we'll let these share what God put on our heart. Can we go back to the
through the pictures here. Amen. So here we are. Uh, notice in the front with the white shirt, that is John Wandera, who you've been supporting for a number of years in Uganda. He made the trip from Uganda down to Zambia to be with us. It was wonderful. And praise God, by grace, through faith, we're believing he's going to be standing right here sometime in October. Amen? <laughs> Buddy, they love to sing and dance, and man, those can get their, their groove on, okay? These folks do some dancing. Amen? And you know what? But they don't got nothing on us. We can dance right with them. Amen. Praise the Lord. So there's the pastors rejoicing. As we're teaching, they all had the grace booklets. They're going through the notes. It was just beautiful. The relation we had uh, go on. And they, the praise teams were live. And it was, it was just a wonderful time of worship. Praise God. You know, we gave out uh, glasses. Um, and, and they were so appreciative. So many coming up front and getting their glasses. We gave out Bibles. And we gave out 500 Andrew Womack. Uh, the War is Over book. I encourage everyone, if you're a new one in the church and don't know about this yet, we have Bible school classes here at the River of Life. River of Life 101 is out there on the shelf. It's Joseph Prince's book, Destined to Reign. Or you can read Andrew Womack's book, The War is Over. It's the same thing. It's the gospel of truth. Praise God, the gospel of His grace as written by Paul. We encourage you to go through. I want everyone, especially if you're going to be teaching here at the River of Life, teaching a class, we want all of our teachers to definitely go through River of Life 101 and 102. Amen? And understand His grace where you can not only understand it, you can give it out. Because whatever you receive, it's not just for you, it's for others. So pick up one of those, sign for it, check it out or buy it, whatever. Take that home and make sure you go through uh, Destined Terrain or The War is Over. And then we get into a little bit about the kingdom from Dr. Miles Monroe, and his books are out there too. Praise God. So we, we all got, uh, got uh, different messages to preach. There's DJ uh, preaching to the crowd. Praise God. After uh, the, the, the conference went Friday and Saturday. Now, church, I'm talking about preaching all day Friday. Nine o'clock it started. We told our driver from the motel, what time you want to pick us up? Five. So we're there. I want you to let you know we're we're all, you know, we try to get a, a break or two and go do something while we're in Africa. But buddy, we're there to preach the word. Nine to five on Friday, nine to five on Saturday, and we love it. It just, they start sucking it right out of us. It just keeps on flowing. So we eat with them, whatever they eat. At lunchtime, we uh, get to back to our hotel. On the second day, on the Sunday, we went to about six different churches. So we're in the churches in Livingston preaching and teaching there. There you saw Miss Barbara. She was with me at the church we went to. We went out to a restaurant, and these guys, these guys, they had to try the caterpillars, you know. So, so those are caterpillars. They're fried. They were fried kind of hard, so had a little crunch to them. Okay, go on. We don't want to show too much of that. We did, on a, we, we did get a chance. We arrived on Wednesday, so we had one day to look around a little bit. So on Thursday, we went on a safari. It's the same safari we went a few years back with uh, Jesse, Rachel, and Mary, and them got to go. Uh, we did see giraffes, praise God, on that safari out in the wild, zebras. Praise God, God's got a sense of humor, man. Look, he made a zebra, you know. Now, a little different, we went to the rhinos, and you had to, you had to go to a separate place Pay an extra 10 bucks, and this security this guard with a machine gun would walk you out where these rhinos are. They're rare. So we got close to them. And now right here, hold right there a second. So we're close. They're lying down. And we're about from here to that door. And we're all taking pictures. And I kind of said, aren't we a little close? You know, I'm kind of in charge of the team, right, for their safety. And he said, well, we study their mood. And, you know, as long as they're laying here, they're fine. It's when they get up and point their ears back. And right when he said that, they did this. You know, and so, and the guy's looking at us, so we kind of backed up a little bit. Okay, go on. Praise God. And uh, there we are, Victoria Falls, one of the seven wonders of the world, just glorious. Praise God. Sometimes while you're worshiping, we have the pictures of those falls behind the words. Uh, it's just a beautiful place. There's the whole team enjoying the falls. So this was uh, Thursday, the day before the conference started. We had a little time there. Okay, go on. We'll move forward. Now, while we were, and that picture got stretched, they're not, they're not really that wide. Okay, they're a little wide. 
but not that wide. Um, while we were enjoying the falls, Team 2, or should I say Team 1, Drew and uh, Jake, praise God, and Tommy, you know, they, they were over at the project, and they were putting up a fence for the goats. And buddy, that ground was hard to go on, so they were getting that ready, um, putting all the holes in. Um, and while they were there, a cobra came out. And with his big, you know, a spitting cobra, one with the big neck fang in them, had just walked through there. It comes out, and they wanted to get it because there's a lot of kids there. So they burned that pile and, and got the cobra. And so uh, we'll go on. Uh, now, these guys went to the conference, and they came straight home after the conference because they had to get back to work. Because a lot of their businesses send us to conferences. So I said, y'all go home and work, okay? So praise the Lord. So they went back to work. But while, so they just had Monday, while we were traveling Sunday back to the project, they were flying home. So they had, they had just Monday morning, and they went to a different safari. And at that safari, they had cheetahs and lions. And uh, look at this, man. So your bass player and worship leader, Clay, is quite the lion tamer. Taking the next picture, and uh, there's uh, Mr. Hayes getting kind of up close and personal. Look at that. And uh, now Clay's got the lion by the tail. By the lion, by the tail! <laughs> Isn't that something? So, of course, as uh, you know, these guys post some things. As they posted on Facebook that uh, Tommy was the hero catching the snake, Clay had to post back, yeah, while well, y'all were playing with a little snake, we're wrestling lions. So, anyway. So that was the safari part of the trip. Praise God, here's the fence the guys built for the goats. Strong and wonderful fence. There's the fence with the goats in it. And this fence covered a few acres. It was a big, a lot of work they accomplished. By the time we got there, uh, man, the, all the posts were up. They were just stretching uh, the fence and tying things off. Uh, pray, there's, a, there's a new monkey at the project that hangs, up around, hangs out around the goats. So the kids enjoyed him. Now look, I just wanted to see, let you guys see a kind of a wide angle here. Um, the first big building is the DLI Center where they hold pastor conferences and sometimes village outreaches. This, this um, orphanage and, uh, is not only reaching the 26 kids they have in three houses, eight in each, um, and plus some of the mother's kids, but every day when there's no school or when school's out, all the village kids from around Love to come to the project, especially when someone like Miss Faye and Miss Barbara brings all these toys and new games and they hear about it. I mean, there must have been sometimes 60 and 80 kids in the evenings at the project from the villages. So they're, they're doing a wonderful work there and they're reaching the gospel into the villages. It's amazing. So here you see a bunch of kids playing, Miss Barbara and the children and uh, the new jump ropes Faye uh, got for them. They're enjoying uh, Jake built another swing. There you see what it looks like in the evening on the grounds. Amen. Praise God. These are the house mothers. Uh, got a good relationship. Annie and Amelia and Annis. Uh, they take care and our ladies had a good relationship with them. Not only that, these ladies cooked for like the 60 pastors we had there that day. They cooked for all of them uh, the, the traditional meal. Um, there, that's wash day. All these kids every Friday have to wash all the clothes by hand, you know, and uh, Faye got involved in that. I think Jake called her Faye Tag instead of Maytag. This young man is Kennedy. He's got an awesome spirit and leadership upon him. He, uh, he coaches the other kids in soccer. He's, he, was, he, he invited him personally to the conference. He came and listened, and he, he just said, I, I want that to be me one day sharing this word. And brother, we said it will be. There he is leading these kids in their soccer drills, you know. Uh, praise God. He, now here's the conference on Tuesday. Um, so while they were there still working on the fence, Jake had already built the trusses to go in the hammer mill house. That was one of our goals. That was done. They were working on the fence. They were waiting for the hammer mill house, the blocks to be finished. Um, we had a conference there. And these are local, 20 local churches from the bush came with their leaders. We had about 60, and they, they, the grace message was imparted to them in such a way they received. It was joyful. Uh, praise God. Here's the ladies serving. 
all of them. We served all those pastors a meal. Uh, praise God, church, y'all provided that meal for them. It was a joy. Uh, this, now this, something about this, this, this project, they're becoming kind of like we do at Fresh Start, where we have all these different businesses to become self-sustaining. Uh, they are doing that as well. That's such a joy. This on the left is the hen house, and on the right is the broiler chickens. So they are raising now 300 eggs a day. Not only are the eggs feeding the children, but they have cartons of eggs, 30 eggs in a carton, selling them to villages for 30 quaches. It's like um, a dime, an egg. But people from the village, it's, it's more convenient for them there. They don't have to go all the way to town, can come, and it provides protein for the village children as well. Praise God. So there's the eggs. And the next one, I've got a few pictures of the broilers. Here's one of the rooms raising the broiler chickens. Um, and go on to the next. Uh, and there they are after about six weeks. When they get to be eight weeks old, buddy, they eat them. They, they you know, harvest them, freeze some of them, eat them, sell some. And so praise God, they're, you know, it's becoming self-sustaining where they're feeding their own children. Here's the bags of, um, of and Shema, this is, uh, they, they raise corn. The church sent them years ago a tractor. Uh, we send them farmers. Drew and Roy have been over there helping them farm and uh, learning. And the, the corn harvest has multiplied in such a way. You, the church, sent them a corn sheller where it shells their corn. And then this trip, the corn hammer mill um, grinds the corn. It grinds it into a very fine flour. And their meal, I've tried to explain, they boil it. It comes out looking like a big pile of mashed potatoes, but it's corn. And they eat it every meal. It's the staple across all South Africa, sub-Sahara Africa, uh, the corn that they eat. So now, this is the hammer mill. This was inside the DLI center where we have services, where we teach pastors, where they're going to have a computer lab for the children. We needed to get it out of there. So the goal here was to build another house for it and to have a house in that room for the hammer mill to operate with electricity and have storage for the grain, okay? So this is the house that was being built. You can see the chicken place behind it. Um, they got the, the, what do you call that top part, Jay? The top part where the roof's going to go on, okay? That plate, and then uh, they got that done. Jake had all the rafters built. And there they are putting up. Now, this is the last few days. Hey, we're trying to accomplish a goal, and time's running out. We're leaving Thursday, and this is like, you know, Wednesday, you know. So they're up early, and everybody's working on that. Praise God. And our, our crew did such a good job. Uh, go on there. There's a few more pictures. Uh, there it is with the tin on. And I'm telling you, church, Wednesday evening, the sun is setting. Lights are going out. The last nail of the tin roof is going on. And we left on Thursday morning. So, man, the team accomplished its goal. Um, there's Dallas O, Jackson, and Morgan, some of the workers that work there regularly. Uh, a few years ago, we took these guys to Victoria Falls with us. Uh, praise God. This is a, we visited a school. Here's Tyler, Teacher of the Year from the U.S., visiting a Zambian school. Got to see the kids and see the school. It's you know, they, uh, they lack facilities and things, a lot of run down, a lot of stuff, but praise God, they're doing what they can. And um, this, a pastor we support there, who is the pastor of the church that pastors the children, McJustin, this is his home um, in church. Uh, I tell the story, I tell the story, um, a few, that's McJustin, and this is his church. Now, just keep it right there a second and look at this church. A few years ago, we were there three years, three or four years ago. We were there. McJustin invited us into his home. You saw that mud hut home. It was a little smaller than that, and it didn't have a tin roof. It had a thatched roof. We sat in their one-room home, this mud brick around, no lights, and um, he was telling us a story. He graduated a seminary in Lusaka, the capital city, wanted to go to the bush, was called out to the bush. Now watch how God works. This guy has a heart to love people. He's laying down prostrate on the floor of that little building. And he's crying out to God to help him with this work. Down the road comes a mission team from South Korea. Going down that bush dirt road. They hear by the spirit voice of someone crying out to God. Now he's off the road and there's, you can't see the building from the road before. Now they have two roads and you can. They hear, they stop and listen. Follow the voice of the spirit. And go to him where he's praying. 
meet him, talk to him, pray with him, and said, we're coming back to build your church. A couple years later, they built this. Amen. <laughs> then you, church, a few years ago, sent the money. When fine, their pro progress is happening, electrical lights, the, there's a new road there down that highway. Um, the light poles have come. The electricity has come down the road. You helped them get electricity to this building. There's no lights hanging down yet, but the electricity strung there, and it's wired going to his house, as, or, or from his house to the building. I don't know which one. But anyway, he's got electricity. That's one of the nicer-looking churches in the whole region. You know, it doesn't have a thatched roof. It's got a concrete floor, not dirt, and they came and built. It's just amazing what God can do. Um, go on. Here we are um, on the property of Project Samuel, a chieftain granted for Timothy's vision years ago. 250 acres of his kingdom in the bush. They got that registered with the law, with the state, and on his land is this one family, Lucky, that young man in the middle, and this was his grandmother's house and his and stuff, and so they allowed them to continue and live in there, but they also let whatever teams come go visit his house. So we visit his house and get to see it, what it looks like in the bush. Church, just think about this. There are Thousands of these hut homes all through. When we walk down the road, you go to the school and there's 500 kids at the school. You look around and say, where they come from? There's no neighborhoods. You walk down a trail and you go down the trail, you'll see a group of these huts. Four or five of them. A cooking hut, grandma's hut, their hut. Parent died from malaria and the kids, right? You walk down the trail another you know, quarter mile and there'll be another group of huts. And for hundreds of miles in both directions, there's huts. They've lived like this for thousands of years, okay? And uh, progress is coming, you know, but this is the way still many live. Walk to a place where there's a hand well, pump the water, carry it on their head back. Amen? So praise God, there they are. We visited the hut. A couple more pictures. And uh, go ahead. Lucky, he cracks these rocks with a hammer and makes those stones and sells those stones. That's what he does for a living. Uh, if he can get a wheelbarrow full, I think he gets a dollar. Two dollars, praise God. And pray, uh, when, we, when they drove us to the airport, they were continuing with a busload of, they took the high school kids, five kids, to Victoria Falls. They got to see Victoria Falls for the first time. What a joy. And uh, that's what you're investing in at Project Samuel, this project, and it's ongoing. And that's what you're investing in when you send us to do these pastor conferences. Let me say this. We've now been invited to Namibia, Zimbabwe, Botswana, Malawi, Ethiopia. But I feel like what's next, when I was looking at the map, there was a city that stuck out to me in northern Zambia. Because I thought maybe the leader who set up this one could set up another one in another city. This city has four cities close by. We wouldn't have to pay for all of them to lodge or transport. They could come locally and go back home. And um, while I was thinking about that, then the leader, Leighton, comes to me at lunch and says, there's something, somebody I want you to meet. And walks up this tall man, taller than the rest, and his wife. And he's a doctor and a pastor from that city that I was pointing to. And he said, we want you to come. He said, he said, I'm a leader of a network of pastors. It won't be any trouble for me to organize this. You won't have to pay for transfer to lodging. We can bring them in. That's probably going to be the next one, church. Praise God to go to impart this truth. Why? Because they're hungry for it. It's not a new gospel. It's, not, it's the gospel of grace. We just impart it in a way where they see it clearly, just as you have. And uh, it opens their eyes and they never look back.